One of the issues with waking up, one of the issues that I've experienced myself and I'm still experiencing is the process of waking up is like being involved in an accident because your life is going this way and all of a sudden something hits you and you see the world completely differently you see everything I've never thought about that I never suspected that I didn't know this I never felt psychic energy from that. I never saw somebody's aura. I never talked to an elf. I got all these voices in my head and never realized something else is going on. I feel connected to the universe and I don't even know how to explain it. But I feel it. Waking up is like this. My life is going that way. All of a sudden, no, you're going that way. So the natural instinct of a human being, when pushed, you say, no, I'm not going that way. Right? You say, no, I'm staying the course. Now, for many people, they can do that. They have an awakening. They're sick for a week. They're in the hospital for a month. They have feelings. They have more compassion. Uh, they want to do more activism. They all of a sudden change their gender. They did change their career. They have an awakening. They start watching alternative videos. They start reading about quantum physics. They start following a religion. They go to a church, study Buddhism, go to the temple, start praying, meditation. So some people, they wake up, they make a few adjustments, but they stay the course. I've, you know, Okay, I'll go to church, I'll do meditation, I'll do yoga. I'm doing yoga now. I'll be more polite. I'll be more humanistic. They become more human, right? Humanism. I'll have I'll show morality. I won't be as corrupt. I'll stop taking drugs. I'll cut down my sex addiction. I won't put so much value on my work and money. So they make a few adjustments, but they stay the course. Basically, I'm going to keep doing, I'm basically, this is who I am. Now, some people, they wake up they're so profound. They do. They change their gender. They change their job. They change the way they look at things. They change their name. Change my name. And then they're off course. They're going to resist. Everybody resists. Everybody resists change. Anybody who tells you, I had an awakening and I abandoned everything. No. No. In the old days, in ancient times, in ancient practice, when you had an awakening, it was determined to have some kind of spiritual context, depending on your culture. But let's say you were ancient Indian culture. You had an awakening. It was a spiritual context. You become a monk. You become, you become ascetic. Ascetic means you abandon all temptation. You abandon all your desires. Shave your head. Go live on a mountain. This is what leads people to Buddhism or uh, becoming a priest or whatever religion, is this awakening. The traditional uh, process, the traditional process was, I had an awakening, I'm connected to the universe, I hear the voice of God, 
I've seen angels. I hear angels. They visit me in my sleep. All of a sudden, I don't hate people as much as I used to hate them. All of a sudden, the food tastes different. We have an awakening. What do we do? Traditionally, we go to spirituality. Call it spirituality religion, depending on your culture. You know, if you're Roman Catholic culture, you're going to go to God. If you're Asian culture, you're going to go to Buddhism, Taoism, even Confucianism. If you're not allowed to be religious, Confucianism is a philosophy. So we become more philosophical, we become more wise, we become more respectful. We start eating organic food today. We start eating organic food. We start doing more yoga, right? We preach love and compassion. Whether we practice it, is yoga an answer? Is yoga the answer? If, if I become awakened, I become connected to the universe, I become one with the system, I connect to Gaia, and I keep living my life, but I do yoga, does that make me, have I, have I fulfilled my obligations of waking up? This is the issue, obligations of waking up. So there's some people who will make a few adjustments, there's some people who will make life changes. And then there are those people in the third category who will abandon their old life. They will become a monk. They will renounce. These are called the renunciates. That's the, I think that's the right term, the renunciates. They will renounce the world. That everything is, again, it depends on your culture. If you're Asian culture, you're likely going to follow Buddhism, which would say hey, the, the world is an illusion. But even, even modern alternative thinkers are saying the world is an illusion. But Buddhists, Buddhists have been telling the world that the world is an illusion for 2,500 years. It's not a new concept. It's a Buddhist, it's a Buddhistic concept. The Gnostics, which were 500 years after uh, Buddha, they were talking about the same thing. The world, they would say the world is a prison, right? So Buddhism says, well, the world is an illusion. The more you attach yourself to the illusions, the more you suffer. So to, to, to ease your suffering, to end suffering, you detach yourself from the world. You detach yourself from wants, desire. You detach yourself from expectation. This is like a Buddhist thinking, but it's it's Buddhist, but it's not it's it's shared by many people now, even the alternative community. They say that they just say the different words, but it is Buddhism. It was invented twenty five hundred years ago. Detachment. How many times you've heard that? Detach, let go. Where does that come from? It comes from ancient philosophy. Nobody says they're Buddhist, but they're taking information from ancient masters. The masters, the Taoists, and they all said this kind of stuff, right? The middle path. Well, you have uh, Taoism says the middle path. Buddhism says the middle path. Today we say moderation. Where does moderation come from? So we, we're mixing things up. So in the, in the traditional sense, you had an awakening, you go spirituality, you become, you become Buddhist or you become a Christian. I had a rebirth. I become Christian. I go to church. I read the Bible. Whatever your, whatever your culture, the culture, how you grew up, that's usually where you go. But when you have a radical awakening, you don't go there. You, you start doing something different. Like if you start meeting extraterrestrials and aliens, well, you're not going to become a Buddhist. You're going to start talking about UFOs. You're going to track UFOs. You're going to become a UFO expert, right? But here's the, here's the issue that when you wake up, you had an accident. It's just like you're, you're having a good life, you have an accident, and then you're paralyzed. Well, that's like waking up, because what you were doing before, which is walking, 
you cannot do anymore. So you have, you're forced. This is why there are these accidents. You're forced to reevaluate your life, to change. Or you have a severe illness, a, a mysterious illness. This happens all the time. Somebody's even successful people, musicians, um, actors, with it. We know about them more publicly, right? But family members, they have a severe illness that leads to change, new perspective. I want to eat better. I want to treat people better. So this awaking process for some people is so extreme, it's like being crippled. In other words, where you used to walk, you can't walk anymore. In other words, when you're visited by a alien being, when you're taken aboard a spaceship, when you're connected to the universe is so profound, whatever happens to you, a lot of times these alternative thinkers, they don't tell you everything that happened because they're too embarrassed. A, they're too embarrassed. B, they don't know how to explain it. And C, if they told you stuff they saw and voices they heard, you might lose, they might lose credibility. So they hide it with this, I believe in parallel dimensions and quantum healing. Well, where did you get the idea from? How do you believe in quantum healing? What's your motivation? They don't explain it. Some people, they, they don't tell you how they awoke. And many years later, they say, well, yeah, this guy, this being, this blue being walked into my bedroom. So, for, you know, for 10 or 20 years, you don't know why they changed their life and shaved their head. It's because a blue being walked in their room or they saw something really strange. I've had friends tell me many years later, they've seen orbs of light dancing over their car. They just, they don't know how to explain it. And that had a profound effect on them. So we don't always know the cause, but we know the change. And anybody in the alternative business who dedicates their time to this business has had an awakening, which is a kind of accident. You're forced to find answers because you, when you wake up, you go, I, I got all these questions. The spiritualists are the same. It's like, oh, all of a sudden, I, where am I from? Who made me? Who made them? Who made the universe? What governs the universe? Who decides who lives and who dies? You get all these questions that you don't find in school, you don't find in a book, you know, not often. So you go to the alternative community and you start to research and you start to listen to these people who you thought were lunatics and all of a sudden you say, hey, that guy, he's not a lunatic. I actually understand what he's saying. Before you woke up, you're like, those people, those crazy people, they should be in a mental institution. After you wake up, just... I've had people myself, my whole life, because I've always been, I've always pursued higher knowledge. S especially since my late teens, 18, 19, is when I started to pursue higher knowledge. Whether it was traditional Chinese medicine, whether it was martial arts, healing herbs, organic food. I was involved in that 30 years ago. 30 years ago, I used to talk about this stuff. Meaning of the universe, uh, what's the cause of disease, the benefit of organic food, the benefits of vitamins, all this stuff. And I got the same reaction from people. You are crazy, you are nuts, you're weird, you're strange. The same people, you know, 10 years later, they're eating organic food. They're taking vitamins. But before, they wouldn't listen to me. Right? And then when they get older, they're sharing ideas of spirituality, which I discussed before. I was looking at Taoism and Buddhism in my early 20s. But those people were fixed on their career, making money, becoming successful, getting married, having sex, all getting drunk, all that stuff. So they did that. 
So they call me crazy. They call me strange. But years later, it's not so strange. Years later, they want my advice. When they have a spiritual question, they ask me. But when I had a profound awakening in 2005, I've been, I've been pursuing it for years, but 2005 I had a profound awakening where these elven people walked through my wall, three of them into my room, and they came for three, three nights. Not one night. It's not one hallucination. Three nights, and I've never taken drugs. I've never taken drugs. Anybody tells you that they found drugs in my possession is a liar. Somebody put it there. I've never taken them. I've never carried I've never taken them. I never carried them. I have no interest in stupidity. Drugs are for stupid people.